let's get kicked off with some pop culture. Pop culture. So, I don't know whether you have noticed, but on social media, there is one thing that seems to be more coveted than almost anything on social media. Yes, likes are important. Yes, comments are important. Yes, the number of followers, it makes you look so good. But there is one, one thing that makes you so much, so much more important than anyone else, makes you so much better than anyone else. That's right. That's a little blue tick next to your name. The little authorized, verified account makes you a proper influencer on social media. Well, I hope you could understand we're talking a little tongue-in-cheek because, you know, there's there's been a little bit of a controversy that's coming out. You, you may see those little blue checks and go, well, that person must be really important if they, if they have a blue check. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Some new, some new uh, information has come to light and been revealed through an article in ProPublica. I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sure I'm not. But as with everything, our links to all the articles that we're referring to are down in, our, uh, in the description. Uh, but they came across a bit of a bit of a let's call it a scam a blue tick scam where they found that there's all these people trying to buy their way into that influencer realm buy their way into the blue check mark now the thing is is most people have that blue check mark who have that blue check mark can use that to to um uh, to sell better products, to be able to charge more for for their for their ads that the people uh, or their sponsorships and everything like that, and so obviously it's worthwhile if you have that blue check. It's going to make your your business better on social media as well as make people trust you even more. So what's that worth? Well, apparently it's worth. About ten thousand dollars, roughly, but uh, depending on who you go to, there was a little bit of a scam where they found that there was a loophole with getting uh, the blue check marks being put on accounts if they were famous uh, musicians, and so they did it through the music route. And what they found is there's all these fake influencers that were that were creating fake Spotify accounts and everything like that, putting literally royalty free music looping tracks on there took some photos in front of expensive cars and airplanes and and whatever and made it look like they were this performing artist and Instagram and and Meta and everyone authorized it and gave them a blue tick well they found hundreds of them and I'm sure there's a lot more that'll be revealed but it's really interesting that there's all these people that are just chasing this blue check mark. And so that's what I want to talk about today is, is as a leader, what are you chasing? Dr. Rod, as a leader, what are you chasing? Well, this might sound very pious, but I'm really chasing the kingdom of God. I, I um I guess in some ways I'm old enough not to worry too much about what people think of me or, or you know, rising up some kind of status ladder. Uh-huh. Um, and I think, you know, most of us as we grow older, we start thinking a lot more about the kingdom and what kind of legacy we might be leaving behind for those who, who actually follow us. And um, it does, I think, become a little bit less about us and more about the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And that seems to me just to be a function of us getting older. So I'm not um, being critical of younger people. It, it just has something to do with, the, if you like, the natural process of us maturing as, uh, as human beings. So, yes, I, I, I've got a really strong desire just to see people grow mm-hmm. in their relationship with the Lord. Um, to see them actually becoming investors in the kingdom rather than what I call consumers. Yep. Um, and, and I guess at the end of the day, what it is all about really is being a disciple, making disciples. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I just love that little expression mm-hmm. to be able to say, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. And as I'm being discipled, so too I'm discipling others. Mm, that's great. So the thing that I really, really, thing that speaks to me about this is 
do it's really look in in life it's really easy to chase the title right so we're looking at we're talking about blue check marks on social media but most people watching mate well actually most people probably would aspire to have that blue check mark and and there's nothing wrong with aspiring to have that blue check mark i i hope to have it one day like the, like there is no as long as it's worth something then if it's not worth anything then i don't want it but but it's so easy to try to chase the title you know in in church everyone wants to be a pastor or everyone wants wants that leadership title you know to to be able to to be able to call themselves that position or 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 you you want that promotion because you want the job title rather than what actually comes with it right and it's so easy for us as leaders to get caught up into chasing title look I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I remember, I remember, look, there's probably many, many times that I've chased title. But the one, the one time that always jumps out at me when I think about this was probably the time when I actually had a revelation around it. That's probably why that moment is so important for me. Is when I was uh planning the church campus. And it was really interesting because I hadn't been ordained as a pastor at that stage, and I, 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 but I was running the church. I was pastoring people, and and most of the people in the church called me Pastor Craig anyway. You know, like, and and you know, I just got I just got sick of telling people, no, I'm not, I'm not, uh, whatever. Like, yeah, okay, like if you see me as your pastor and you feel like I'm pastoring you, you know, and but. At first, when I first started planning, I was like, well, I want that title. Like, oh, I want that title of pastor because it's kind of like the coveted uh, title. And then I really felt God speak to me and, and say, "If you are you really chasing that title or do you want the thing? And, and, and what I mean by that is, did I just want the label or did I want to actually be that thing? Did I want to embody being a pastor, which meant I didn't need the title, I just needed to live it? Or do I just want a title which is empty, like the blue ticks? Do you actually just want the blue tick? Or do you want to be so influential that you get a blue tick? And that's that's kind of my that's kind of my my route is. With all of these things, we can we can chase the same things, right? Like the, the, it's okay for us to to pursue the same things, but are we pursuing it for the result or are we pursuing it for the impact? And that's kind of like for me, you you can be an influencer, but if you're just wanting to be an influencer so that people will be amazed by you and praise you and everything like that then you're chasing the wrong thing. You're chasing the things of this world. You're chasing empty things. But if you want to be an influencer, because like Dr. Rod just shared, you, you want to see people grow. You want to disciple people. You, you want to be able to help and serve people. Then it's okay to chase the influence because your heart, your intention, like as Proverbs 6, 9 says, from, from the issues of, of your heart, uh, from the heart flows the issues of, of life. So Dr. Rod when have you actually found that you're either chasing the the impact of the thing or the title of the thing? Well, I can tell you this. When I was 12 years old, I decided I wanted to become a bishop. Mm. And the reason for that was I, I was an Anglican um, back in those days. Well, I suppose in a way I still am. But um, and, and the bishop came to visit me at home because um, we, we were having a what they call a confirmation ceremony and I was part of that. I'd already been confirmed, but I was what they called, I think people would understand the role as altar boy these days, but we used to call them servers. Anyway, the bishop came to visit me at home to work, you know, go through the run sheet and so on. I was very impressed by that. He was actually a really wonderful, wonderful and humble man. Um, but of course, I was attracted by the robes. And I have to admit, I really liked his car. <laughs> and at 12 years of age, I thought, I want a car like that. I want to wear gear like that. Therefore, I need to become a bishop. <laughs> Funnily enough. So, did you get the robe? No. Did you 20 get the years car? later. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're they're um, worth a lot of money now, those cars, though. Um, 
20 years later, I was in a Pentecostal church. I've got to become a pastor. I've got to become a pastor. I want to be a pastor. I want to be teaching from the Bible. I want people to call me pastor. 30 years later, I became a pastor. But I had very, very different motivation. Yeah. But, you know, it took me all that time, all yeah, that wow. time, nearly 50 years. I was over 60 years of age when I, when I was actually fully ordained as a minister within Australian Christian churches. We don't get robes <laughs> and no. we certainly don't well, automatically you get, get, you get a fancy car. You have the robe of salvation, though. At least you've got I that. I do right. that. I do that. <laughs> um, and look, when I gave up full-time paid employment in, in 2020, my motivation was to become a better pastor. I realised that mm. I couldn't become the kind of pastor I wanted to be, which, which was disi discipling people, focusing on discipling people. I couldn't do that when I was working for somebody else in a full-time paid position. And look, my wife and I, we prayed about it. And we both, as it were, independently after prayerful consideration, we came to the conclusion that it was time to step out in faith, believe that God was going to provide for us, and that I wasn't going to be you know, relying or expecting on a paycheck every two weeks. But my motivation by the time I was in my 60s, my mid-60s, I would have to say, was very different to what it was when I was an immature 12-year-old. But it took a long time. It was a lifetime of experience, uh, of learning from the Lord, of listening to other people before I got that really solid understanding of why it was I wanted to become a pastor and ultimately I wanted to be a good pastor to other people. Um, and look, the truth of the matter is right now I couldn't say that I'm influential. Right now I couldn't say that I'm important, but I do think I have come to be very uh, secure yep. in the idea that I do have people whom I am discipling. Yeah, that's good. And uh, be that many or few, I'm doing what I believe God has actually called and prepared me to do over a long period of time. And, uh, you know, as I was actually preparing for our discussion, to be honest, I didn't even know about these blue checks. <laughs> so I had to do, I had to do quite a bit of Googling and, and quite a bit of reading. Um. And, and what actually came to mind for me was a little verse out of Ecclesiastes, which um, I, I kind of love it and I quote it quite often. It's Ecclesiastes 5.10 and depends a little bit on the translation you use, but it basically says, he who loves silver or money will never be satisfied with silver. Mm -hmm. uh, he who loves abundance with increase. Yeah. So and what I think the broader application of that is that if we are actually after titles or power or money, even when we have it, we won't be satisfied. Never and I think that's enough. one of the things that ultimately motivates people to do things like we've read in the particular um, case that you're, you're alluding to, where someone's prepared to pay a lot of money, at least 10000 I think there was one instance where someone was prepared to pay $100,000 for the shortcuts mm -hmm. to get the blue check. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they're not satisfied without having it. Yep. But one thing I can guarantee, once they've got it, it won't satisfy them. It doesn't. They'll go anything. on to the next thing. Yep. And ultimately, they, they'll break rules. They may even ultimately break the law and still not be satisfied with what they have. But I think you're talking about influence. In my language as a pastor, that's about discipleship. Mm. That's a different thing altogether. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm really glad that you've raised this issue and it really is important for people who are watching us that they understand there's a big, big difference between ambition for personal purpose and this whole idea of influencing people for the growth of the kingdom. Yeah. Like the, I mentioned my story of when, when I was trying to chase the title of pastor um, the one, the, the verse that really stood out to me was in Matthew six is where, where he, he shares about, um, well, 
for those of you who like you give and you pray in public and 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 you want people yeah, to, you want people yeah. to go wow this person's awesome they give a lot of money they pray a lot like you, you do all those things and you get your reward from people like they celebrate you yes that's right yeah you now have your reward that's, that's it. it that's right you know that's it you got it already yeah. but for those who do it in 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 secret in private and I know it's kind of not a hundred percent like accurate with like, well, you can't do social media in private, but it's, it, it's that same sort of meant if you're chasing those accolades, if you're what they say, clout chasing and, and trying to get those things because of what it is rather than the, int- the true, the true exactly. proper intent, exactly. yeah. then you've got, once you get your blue tick, you've got your reward. If that's what you're chasing, yeah. you've got your yes. reward. Yeah. But but our Father in heaven promises that if you do these things with proper intent, you do them in private, right? Like, yes, obviously social media is is a very public thing. But if you if you aim rather than aiming to get the title, aim to be worthy of receiving the title, and God will bless you. God will honor you. Our Father in heaven promises he will see us. And we won't you prefer to get your reward from a heavenly audience rather than from some followers on social media? So our encouragement to you as leaders, be careful what you're chasing. Be careful of are you chasing the title or are you aiming to be worthy of that title? It kind of like, I'll finish on this one note. I always think about all these people chasing for someone to recognize them, you know, especially like celebrities. They're like, oh, I want this celebrity to to recognize me. And while, yes, it'd be awesome to have, like, so for example, let, let's talk, talk in, in our realm, someone like Pastor Stephen Furtick, right? Like, I know there's lots of people that would love to do like, be cross his paths and and be recognized by him and everything like that. It's like, yeah, but I would love to be operating my business, operating my life, operating my ministry at such a level that someone like that will recognize. I don't want to be recognized. I want to have the I want to be able to build something so significant that does get recognized. Not because of the recognition, but because of the impact you have from doing that. So make sure you you aim to be rather than just aiming to have. Hey, you just watched an excerpt from the On The Cube Leadership Podcast. If you like that, hit the like button and put a comment below. Hey, if you want to watch more videos like this, check out our channel. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe.